So to start off, we're going to need the chassis, right? The chassis is the main body of the robot. We're going to need some of these standoffs. Usually standoffs are used to uh, hold an electrical component off of something that might be conductive or uh, just put some distance between them for air circu circulation. For our, our uh, intent, we're going to actually be mounting the circuit board to it. Then we're going to need these quarter inch little pan head screws. These are the shortest ones in the kit. Uh, and you'll, you'll know if you accidentally put the wrong one in when you assemble this. We're also going to need a rubber grommet here. And it's going to go in the through hole. So what we do is you just kind of scrunch up the grommet and apply it in there. It's going to take a little bit of a kind of bending to get it to fit in there just right. It's made to fit tightly. So maybe if I scrunch it up, and there, I've kind of got it started. Now I just want to go along the edge and kind of make sure it's all even all around the edge. And there we go. So this this grommet here uh, is protecting the through hole where some wires are going to go through. And since the cut edge of the metal uh, can be a little bit abrasive, uh, it might actually cut into the insulation over time. And so this grommet can kind of protect it. Now we want to apply our standoffs onto this chassis. So we want to make sure that we're doing it on these outermost holes here, right? This one, this one, this one, and this one. So to start doing that, we're going to take one of our quarter inch screws and I'm going to put it through. Remember, we're doing it from the inside. I'm going to put it through the hole. If I can get it there. Put it through. And I'm just going to hold it, just kind of putting pressure with my finger. And I'm going to take a standoff. And these standoffs, they can go either way. They're uh, symmetric, right? So it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to screw it right on there like that. And then it might be a good idea to just hold on to the, the standoff now, take a Phillips head screwdriver, and go in there and just tighten it up just a little bit. And so we need to do that for all four of them. So here's what the chassis should look like after it has the grommet and the four standoffs applied. Next up we need to prepare our servo motors. So oftentimes your commercial off-the-shelf components uh, might not come exactly how you want them, right? In this case, we have these control horns on here that we need to remove. Um, and luckily, this is pretty easy to modify, right? There's a Phillips head screw right in the middle. So if we take our Phillips head screwdriver, we can just put it in there and start taking the screw out. And once it's out, we should be able to just kind of let that fall down and just pull the control horn right off there and now we just have the output shaft of the servo that we can work with later with the wheels. So this might just be a good idea to just put these in a little bag and keep them if you decide to modify this later. You might want to use the servos for something else. And we want to do that to both the servos. They should both have this exposed white shaft. Now we want to mount the servo motors to the chassis. And we're going to do that using these 3 8 inch pen head screws. And we're also going to use some regular nuts. And so I should point out that there are two different types of nuts in this kit. There are just the regular 440 nuts. And those nuts are just kind of general purpose. And there's specialized nuts in there called lock nuts. And you can see that there's actually a little bit of plastic material on them. And that uh, makes it so the nuts don't come loose when it's exposed to vibration. But for mounting the servos, we actually don't need the lock nuts. We just need these uh, normal 440 nuts. So we want to take our chassis here and one of our servos. And we actually want to put it on the inside of the chassis. And we want the shaft to be in line with this through hole where we put our grommet in. So for this next part, we're actually going to need this tiny acrylic wrench and we're also going to need our screwdriver. What we want to do here is we first want to take a nut and we just want to apply it to one of these holes, right? Just want to put it on the back on the inside of the chassis and I'm just going to kind of hold it there. 
And then I'm going to grab a screw, and not using the tools yet, I'm just going to kind of get this started by hand. So I'm, I'm holding the nut tight against the motor, and then I'm going to start screwing the screw in just with my fingers. It's, if you can get started with your fingers, it's going to be a lot easier. And then, now that I've mostly got it on there, we want to use our tools to kind of tighten it up. So I'm going to just take the wrench, and I'm going to hold it on there, and it's going to be easier to keep the wrench stationary and turn with the screwdriver. And the nice thing is, is, as long as I apply pressure to this wrench, eventually it's going to rotate and hit the side of the chassis, and then it's not going to move, and that nut's going to stay stationary. Then I can just pick this wrench off, and I can go ahead and do that to the next four screws. Or, sorry, the next four plus three, so the next seven screws, right? We have two motors to mount in here. When you're putting these screws in here, if you notice that you're having a really hard time threading it through the uh, nut, you might be doing something called cross-threading, and that's something that you really want to avoid because that can actually ruin the screws and the nut, and it can actually make it really hard to take apart. So if you, uh, if you notice that you're having a lot of resistance, what you need to do is you just need to back off, take the screw all the way back out, and kind of just restart until it feels comfortable. If you're having a lot of resistance, you're probably doing something wrong. Also, when you go to put this inside screw on, uh, you might want to actually take your wrench and use the part that goes all the way around the nut because it's a little bit thinner. You might have a harder time fitting this wider end in there for this inside nut. And just a note uh, for when you start designing your own robots and make your own instructions, right? You don't have someone else's instructions to go off of. You have to think about the way you put these things together. Like we put these standoffs on and then put these servos on the chassis. And this, the access for the screw for this standoff right here is actually underneath of the servo. So we would never be able to put this on after we put this uh, servo on there. So you have to consider your order of operations when you design and put these together. So here's what it looks like with the uh, both the motors put on there. right? So we want to make sure that our shaft is aligned with this grommet here. Now we want to get our, uh, we want to take our chassis and mount the battery pack or our power source in the inside of the chassis. So we're going to do that with just two more regular nuts, right? We're not using the uh, lock nuts yet. And some more 3 8 uh, screws. So we want to take the wires for these servos and pick them up and out of the way. Then we want to take our battery pack and we just want to put it in there. We want the wire to be facing toward this kind of cable entry, this hole here with the grommet. So I'm going to also pick up this wire and I'm just going to kind of slide it in there. And we're going to align with these two holes here. Now we can uh, take our screws. We're going to start with this, this hole right here. And we're going to put it in the hole. If I can get it here. There we are. Putting it through. We just see it come out the top side of the chassis. And now we just want to go through and use a, just use your fingers to tighten that up. And then you can take the wrench on this side, take the wrench there, and take our screwdriver and just start tightening this up. We want to, I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure on the wrench to hold that nut in place. And so there's that screw. Now we just need to make a little bit of an adjustment and we can put this screw in here as well. And for our last step here, we want to take all the wires and feed them through this kind of cable pass-through. So I'm just going to start with, just do one at a time so it doesn't get too crowded as you're trying to force things through there. And I'm just going to loop that one through, take this other servo wire, and pass this through. If you're having trouble uh, if, you, if you don't have that much dexterity with your hands, you can always 
take some needle nose pliers and kind of lightly grip them. Obviously you don't want to grip too hard because you can actually uh, damage the, the wire insulation. And then this last guy here, we're going to take the uh, battery pack cable and feed it through. And I'm not actually going to put this underneath the servo cable here. So I'm just going to kind of force it to be underneath that cable. And there we go. So now we've got our, our kind of, you could say, power electronics ready to connect to the board once we're at that point. Now it's time to get some wheels on here. Um, so we're going to take our partially assembled chassis and get our plastic wheels. And we almost have some little grippy, I guess you could call these tires, they actually look like they're big O-rings, but they're just, you know, rubble, rubber circles. We're going to need our, kind of our follower ball. We're using a ball on the rear uh, wheel because it's kind of better at turning multiple directions where wheels are kind of really made to just go straight. We're also going to need uh, some screws that we removed from the servos when we took these control horns off, so we need to reuse these. And last but not least, we're also going to need a cotter pin. So it's just kind of a pin that's made to be bent and hold this uh, follower ball uh, in place. So to start off, I'm going to put the wheels on. And so there's two sides to this wheel. And so when we, when we look at it, we want to look at the one that has the kind of ridges on the inside that are actually made to fit and have a nice kind of friction hold on the servo. So you want to make sure we have them in the right orientation. And then we just take the screw that's made to actually screw right into the servo, right into the shaft of it, and hold that in place, grab our Phillips head screwdriver, and fasten it in there. And we want to do that for the other wheel as well. Now we want to put the uh, follower ball kind of in the rear. So we want to look for the hole that's been uh, born, or I guess maybe formed through here. We want to line it up with this hole in the chassis. We're going to take our cotter pin and feed it through, and then also feed it through the hole in the, uh, in the roller ball. So we're going to feed that through, and then we want to feed it through the other side on the chassis as well. So it takes a little bit of dexterity, but now we've got it all the way through there, and the, now this roller ball is captive on the, uh, on the chassis. And now the last step is we want to actually take the ends of this cotter pin and bend it so it stays in place. So you can, uh, you might be able to do this just with your with your hand, uh, but that that can kind of hurt your fingertips. So if you uh, have a pair of needle nose pliers, you can actually take them, and we're going to kind of just grip this, and I'm going to kind of crush it against the side of the chassis. Same with this guy here. And now that cotter pin is not going to come out and the roller, uh, the roller ball is kind of stuck in place. And then for our very last step in this uh, procedure of putting the wheels on there, we want to stretch these rubber tires or O-rings around the wheels. And this is just giving us traction, right? Traction is a it's often kind of an overlooked thing that's really important when you have any type of mobile device, right? Doesn't matter how powerful your motors are, if you can't get traction, your vehicle's not going to go anywhere. Now it's time to put or take our chassis with, with the motors and the wheels and affix the circuit board to it on the standoffs. I should make a quick note about handling circuit boards. Um, it, it is possible that you can damage a circuit board just by touching it, right? You might have some static built up on your fingertips that can then discharge and ruin uh, potentially fragile components on here. Um, because if you consider it, the transistors on some of the chips on here are very, very small. So it actually doesn't take that much charge to destroy one. Anyway, so we want to grip the board on its sides. We don't want to be touching 
any of these solder pads in the back if we can avoid it. And so I'm actually going to also take the uh, take the basic stamp here, right, which is the main controller for this robot, and I'm going to put it in the socket here. So it's actually in uh, an electrostatic dissipative foam right now. That's what it will come in. So I'm just going to pull it out, remembering to kind of handle it on its side. And this board actually notates that the big chip should be on the bottom, and the smaller chip should be on the top. So I'm just going to kind of start aligning this with the uh, with the socket and then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna push on the plastic part of the chip to get this into the socket that's giving me a little difficulty now I can push it right in there so to mount this board on there we're gonna take these cables and just kind of have them in the back out of the way we want to have this white part here, this is just a small breadboard, facing the front of the vehicle. And we're just going to go ahead and align it. And then we're going to take some quarter inch screws, which are the smallest ones we have in our kit. And we're just going to go through and put it through these uh, through holes on the board and, oops, and start screwing it in there. Right, sometimes I went right to doing it with the screwdriver, but sometimes it might be easier to try and twist it with your finger if possible just to get it started. Right, so I've got it started. Now that I've got it started, it's a little bit easier for me to go in there with the screwdriver and tighten that down. And now it's time for us to uh, make connections to the board. So we need to figure out which one of these servo cable cables is the left motor and the right one. So to do that, I'm just going to take on one of these and just kind of lightly tug on it, all right? Just lightly tug. And I can see that this wire here is moving. And so this is actually the left servo right wire. So that must mean that this is the right one. So then um, our guidebook tells us that the left one is going on the leftmost connector right, the, actually the leftmost set of pins, they both go into the kind of the same connector. And our guide also says that we have black here and red here, so we need to take the servo cable and make sure we have it aligned. I'm just going to plug that in there, just apply a little bit of force. And then we can take our other one, and it's going to be in the same orientation, it's just going to be right next to it. And we can once again apply a little bit of force. And there we have both of those cables. And then you can actually kind of take this and maybe tuck it in there a little bit. And then here, this is our power cable. So you're going to supply it to this barrel jack, right? Put that in there. And then also tuck that cable in there so it just looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Maybe if you have a zip tie, it might be a wise idea to kind of tie those underneath of it. And now at this point, the robot is uh, pretty much fully assembled and ready to start programming and testing it. So it would appear that we ended up with a few extra components. Uh, these must be dis diff different options that you might be able to do. Um, maybe they have different connections or different uh, attachments. Uh, so I'm just going to take these and put them in a Ziploc bag and I might experiment with them later.